right, back with another Photoshop tutorial. We've got a sort of dream beach, dream pool, more of a dream pool than anything else. We've got a beach combined with uh, someone's backyard pool. So let's go ahead and get started and get into this photo manipulation tutorial. So I've got a couple of images, obviously the pool and got this one image of a beach with a palm tree got rid of the palm tree a little bit later but reduced the opacity on that palm tree image just to figure out where this is going to sit also need to try to find a an image that matches the perspective so what i'm going to do is get rid of this tree to put a different one in there. I tried to use this tree, but it just didn't work. So with the lasso tool, gonna select that, gonna shift backspace, do a content aware fill and get rid of that. But we have got this palm tree shadow. So we've got to get rid of this. So I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool and Holding down Alt or Option on Mac, select a certain area and just get rid of this uh, as best I can. So I'm selecting on one of those little transition parts where that water kind of goes to more of an aqua instead of a clear. All right, so we got rid of our tree and I'm gonna create a layer mask on that beach image. And then using a black brush, gonna get rid of some obvious areas that we do not need. So get rid of, getting rid of the top here, revealing some of that pool layer. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush by hitting the left bracket tool. And going in here and deleting with the layer mask some of these finer edges, but I show how later you can just take parts of a palm tree, like the palm tree leaves, and kind of cover up these problem areas where the two images uh, meet. So getting rid of some of that beach area along the edge of the pool. You can tell the perspective is working. So there was a lot of other images I had uh, collected, searched for, that whereby the perspective just did not work, uh, didn't match. So going in with a white brush with the power of the layer mask is you can reveal and conceal all day long without working destructively. So going back in and reestablishing with the white brush uh, some of that beach image. Then reducing the opacity of the brush using a black brush to now conceal some of that beach layer. Just trying to have the transition from the beach layer to the pool be more gradual. So I've got a new image, gonna hit Control T and then right click, flip horizontal. And I did this incorrectly at first. See if you can guess what I did wrong. But you can go to channels on the right there, and select each one of those colors to see how much contrast each one has. In this case, the blue has the most contrast. I'm gonna drag that blue layer into the new layer icon. I'm gonna select this. And with your, I'm gonna right click on this and select the inverse. So it's now selected everything but those beach weeds. And I'm gonna make sure that my foreground layer is white and hitting Alt backspace fills that, the rest of the layer with white. So I'm gonna hit Control I to invert all of that so now you've got this extreme white with the beach weeds and then you've got 
a light gray, but technically that light gray is darker than the white. So if you were to use the burn tool, which I'm using here, select only shadows for the range up top. You're basically making those light gray pixels darker. And so the white pixels are unaffected, but these slightly lighter, actually much darker uh, gray pixels, you can make those darker. And we're really just doing this for that top edge to get a uh, very fine selection to the tops of those beech weeds. And then you can click on the dodge tool, which will do the exact opposite and sort of re-emphasize the brightness of the white pixels. Just trying to make a more obvious selection. So I'm gonna hit or hold down control, select the blue copy, then select the RGB at the top, then select layers. And we've got our beach weeds selected. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit a layer mask. and create a layer beneath this. This is just so you can check what type of uh, selection you ended up getting. So I'm gonna fill this, shift backspace, fill with foreground color, in this case, a really bright orange. I'm not gonna use this layer, just to, it's just to see what type of a selection we've got. So if you think there's some fringing at the top, you can select the layer mask of those weeds Go up to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and just pulling this, you can see how the selection is kind of shrinking. So we're just gonna pull this to the right just a little bit, get rid of any type of fringe. You're gonna delete that orange layer. So again, I've made a mistake with this beach weeds layer. Can you guess what it is? I get pretty far into it before I realize what I've done here. So hitting Control T, you're gonna rotate that into position. Another thing you can do is uh, go into Shape Dynamics and hit Fade. Got that set to 70, I believe. And so because there's a layer mask on this, I can then, now that my brush has this fade, I can reveal some of the tops of those beach weeds and have it look like we got an even better selection. So I'm gonna go through this and just kinda improve the look of these weeds. So you're not using a brush with the color green to create more weeds. You can do that, I think I do that later but you're just revealing some more of that layer. So I've hidden those beach weeds and I need more sand to cover up the rest of that bottom left area of the pool. So I'm just gonna, using the lasso tool on our original beach layer, select more of that sand and then hit Control J to get a new layer. Hit Control T to move this into position then I'm just gonna copy this a few more times. So Control J, you can also hit Control C, Control V to copy paste. But I need to cover up this sort of lower left, lower middle of that pool area with more sand. go into your brush settings and brush tip shape. Make sure your hardness is all the way over to the left and sort of try to blend uh, that extra sand layer because when we cut it out it was really just with the lasso tool and it was a pretty sharp edge. So I've got this new layer of a uh, palm tree so we're gonna do the same thing in trying to select 
those palm tree leaves without driving ourselves nuts with a pen tool and going in and out of all of those little details of the leaves. I'm gonna go to channels, see which color's got the most contrast. It's usually the blue. I'm gonna drag that into the new layer icon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select just what I need to, because uh, we're not gonna have any trouble with the trunk. But all of those leaves are gonna give us a little bit of trouble as far as selecting them. So I'm gonna hit, right click, select inverse, so everything else but that is selected. Gonna hit uh, Alt Backspace. And then Control I to invert it. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing using the burn tool. All of those pixels around the white palm tree leaves are not quite black, they're darker though. So the burn tool will make them even darker. And we've got as far as range up top shadows selected. So it's only affecting those shadows. It's not gonna affect as much those white leaves. You can go back to the dodge tool, which is gonna do the exact opposite. And just trying to brighten these layers up to make sure that they are going to be properly selected. So I'm gonna hold down control, click on that blue copy, then click on RGB, then click on layers. And we've selected that palm tree. Also gonna duplicate that. You can do that by just hitting Control J. And this is just sort of me being lazy. You could take the original file and do a selection of this. I'm just doing this this way where I'm reestablishing everything about the image. Realizing that my brush shape dynamics was still set to fade. I'm gonna set that to pen pressure or else it'll just start fading out on you. So using the layer mask, gonna bring this image back. I really just need the trunk of the tree and a little bit of the sand. So using the pen tool, gonna kind of take my time here and get a pretty good selection. I'm gonna speed this up so you don't sit there but I'm gonna select a good portion of the sand at the base of the trunk of the tree as well. I'm gonna hit Control J after hitting Control Enter to select it. I'm gonna feather this selection about 0.3. But hitting Control J, you can solo a layer by holding down Alt or Option on Mac and hitting the eyeball just to see what you've selected. So then you can combine those two layers, the trunk and the leaves. You can create a group or you can create, you can merge layers by hitting Control E. That's what I did. So that tree, the leaves and the trunk, the sand down below is on one layer now. So after hitting Control T, you can resize this, figure out how big you want this, where exactly it needs to be. So what I'm gonna do is put a uh, color balance adjustment layer over top of this. I'm gonna clip it to only affect the palm tree. You hold down Alt, go in between those two layers and click. And I'll also do the same thing with a levels adjustment layer. Again, both of these on the palm tree layer. So I'm trying to match that sand can see how the sand is a little bit too bright. So I'm going to mess with these controls and the levels, figure out which one I need to mess with in order to try to balance those exposure levels. But as you can see, we're also messing with the palm tree, so we don't want that. But we get it to where the sand is matching, and then we can hit Control i to invert that. And then 
using a white brush. So we've concealed that manipulation. You can use a white brush to reveal some of that. And of course, we're only going to paint that onto the sand layer. So now the exposure or brightness level of the sand is relatively similar. But now using the color balance, we can mess with these colors. Try to find where there's a nice little balance in creating that sort of sandstone color that sand has. So once I've got that, I can also uh, hit control I on that layer mask to hide everything just so we're not affecting the tree trunk. And then with a white brush, reveal some of that change in color to just that sand area. So I've copy pasted, gonna add yet another layer of sand to all of those other layers we did earlier. Because I want this area of the pool to blend, I guess, way more gradual from the sand, the beach, to the uh, man-made, you know, side of the pool. So what I'm going to do is go into brushes. I've already got a dirt brush that I've created. There's a ton of videos on YouTube as to how to create one of these. So I'm not going to go over that, but you can see I've got the size jitter all the way up. Certain settings there. It's got, I've got both axis selected. But fairly easy to create your own dirt brush. Got that all the way up. Got the angle jitter all the way up. But what you can do is then hide that layer of sand, hitting control I. And then with the white brush, reveal some of that sand with this sort of uh, random dirt brush that is going to reveal just little specks of it. You've got a before and after there. And so you can go under FX and then hit drop shadow on what we've just created and create just a little tiny indication of a shadow on all of those clumps of sand. You can figure out like where where is your sun, you know, coming from. You can increase or decrease the opacity. We just want a little subtle effect so that it looks like it's not floating in the air. Also got the blend mode on multiply. There's a before and after there. I'm gonna hit the layer mask and uh, using a black brush to conceal. Some of these particles kind of went where they shouldn't have. So I'm gonna get rid of those, obviously the ones on the lawn chairs. And reduce the opacity of the brush to try to diminish the look of those on that sort of edge of the pool. You can also take the lasso tool and on the sand layer, like select some larger clumps, hold down shift. So we've got a whole bunch, sort of larger clumps, not all of them, but hit control J. So now you've got a layer, if I solo that, you can barely see it. Hit control T and you can move these extra clumps over into that sort of pile of, uh, of sand that is completing that transition. 
so you can barely see them. We'll also try to create a uh, drop shadow. So going under FX, hitting drop shadow, and basically doing the exact same thing that we just did for the other particles of sand. You can crank up the uh, opacity just to see where they are. It's kind of difficult seeing. Figure out where the shadow angle is supposed to be and then reduce the opacity of the shadow. And you can also copy paste that infinite amount of times just to create an even more complicated blend. You can copy the entire group of particles and just paste them you know, more towards the uh, beach area where the weeds are. And also using the lasso tool, um, copy paste one of these beach weeds and put it over top of that group of sand clumps. So here's where I, I think I realize. So the shadows are going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to control T, right click, flip horizontal. But I think it's good, important, I guess, to show this, that you can make a mistake like this and easily fix it. Because so you're kind of, maybe you're listening to music, you're not paying attention, I don't know. But, uh, so now, yeah, with the sun, way over there, sort of middle right corner, your shadows would be going, uh, they're correct now. So I'm going to copy paste that and then rotate that. Image makes more sense now. Leave me a comment if you did notice that the shadow was going in the opposite direction of where it should. So I've hit control J on that entire clump. I'm going to resize it after hitting control T and then right clicking. And I'm going to put some of these clumps back in the distance there. I'm going to create another fade. So I'm working on the layer mask with a white brush, revealing some of that selection, just trying to extend some of these beach weeds. Then creating a shadow. So I've got the shadow going in the right direction this time, but creating a fake shadow. So you can copy paste that entire collection, scale it down, put it more towards the uh, back of the image there. So what I'm doing here is I wanted to select uh, this white foam ripple and copy it, put it in there a couple more times just to emphasize these uh, white ripples. There's a lot of actual beach pools out there. They're rare, but like a zero entry, zero degree entry beach entry to a pool. But I don't think any of them have these white ripples. So anything to make this stand out more you know, the beach weeds do that, but this is another thing uh, that would make it stand out is having these things you would only find in the ocean. So I've got a couple more. I'm going to copy paste that one and rotate it a little bit and just put a layer mask on both of these, kind of clean up the edges. So because I selected the original ripple with the uh, lasso tool, the edges are pretty sharp. So I'm gonna try to get rid of those in order for it to blend better. So 
So what I'm gonna do here is kind of re-emphasize or emphasize, I guess, those white ripples. So I'm gonna switch to a really small brush and using white, that's what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna just kind of sporadically put some white over these little areas just to make those white foamy ripples pop. Because they're showing up, but I don't think they're popping yet. I'm gonna just do this so they really show up well. And doing this in such a way where it doesn't look as if you've, you know, manipulated it. Trying to have it look as natural as possible. So I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool and select all of the water. So it's gonna be this rectangular shape. And then I'm gonna select a color that I'm wanting to fill with this. First, just sort of eye drop the actual water and then create slightly more saturated teal color. Hit shift backspace, fill with that foreground color. And I realize I've got some things on top of this, I've got the ripple on top of it, so I need to move that layer above the ripple. So we've got that, gonna hit control D to unselect or deselect. And I'm gonna mess with the blending mode and I'm just gonna go with soft light create a layer mask on that because we don't want all of that using a black brush to conceal some of what we've just done I'm gonna get rid of most of this color on the actual beach area and then I'm just gonna kind of blend away that first indication of the uh, the teal color. So before and after, not much of a difference. You can always reduce the opacity, but just to make it pop a little bit more. So you've got that, the white ripples plus the extra teal. And hopefully that is popping more so. We're kind of cleaning up the uh, base image. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this awning. So I've got a new layer here. And what you can do is go up to, after creating a new layer, go to filter, render, and then go to tree. You can create Photoshop has its own trees. They don't look great, but in a pinch, you can use them. I've already been messing with palm trees, so it was already set on palm trees, but you can set a whole bunch of different, or select a whole bunch of different trees. You can change from where the lighting is coming from. So we want the light on the right. You can change how many leaves are on the tree. So I've created this tree that kind of looks a little cartoony, but works in a pinch. I'm gonna hit Control T on that layer of this fake tree. I'm gonna size this down and really uh, rotate it. I really just need some of these leaves to kind of help out with this area where the two images are meeting. So you could just also select more of an actual palm tree leaves, but this is just kind of a lazy man way of doing it. And so just trying to create more of a natural edge to where the beach layer and the pool layer are combining. Cause it looked a little messy over there. I'm gonna copy that, that fake tree and try to paste another layer in there. So I've got yet another layer or copy of what we've just done. Rotate it, 
you know, mess with the scale. So I've created a new layer. This is going to be the sun. I'll have a couple of different layers, but selecting a yellowy orange, uh, but extremely bright yellow orange color. So I've got my brush tool, gonna make sure that is on a super soft brush and increase the size with hitting the right bracket tool on your keyboard. It's gonna be a huge brush and I think opacity and flow are at 100%. Just gonna click once and then select soft light. So this just has light kind of going over top of everything, kind of blending everything together. You can always mess with the opacity, bring that up or down. I'm gonna create a new layer and do the exact same thing, but have the brush size a lot smaller. And what you can do is you can label your layers you can also group them. So I've grouped all of those extra fake palm tree leaves. And what you can do is put a hue and saturation adjustment layer over your palm tree. In this case, the main palm tree. So I've got a super orange. You can mess with that, create a minty color if you like. But I'm trying to match that sun color. That's, it looks ridiculous. So I'm gonna control I to invert that. And then with a white brush to reveal what we've just hidden, we've just hidden all of that bright orange version of this tree. And so now with the white brush, that's like, obviously the opacity is way too much, but that's the idea. I'm gonna reduce the opacity in the flow and just try to put some highlights as if the sun is hitting some of these leaves and reduce the opacity and flow a little bit more. You just want a little bit of an indication that the sun is hitting these leaves without going too far, because then it just looks like the leaves are dead. Did that to the group of fake palm tree leaves. So you could create this image with just a whole bunch of fake palm trees instead of going through the trouble of, you know, that complicated selection of that main palm tree we did. Also doing the exact same thing with the uh, trunk of the tree. So I created that layer, hue adjustment layer where it's like a bright orange, and then hit control I to hide all of that. And then with a white brush, just revealing a little bit of where the sun would be hitting. I'm doing the same thing with the weeds. I'm gonna hide all of that by hitting control I and then white brush to reveal some of that sun color that should be dancing all through those weeds. So I've noticed this little white patch is just because we, I set my canvas to 1920 by, uh, by 1080. So I'm gonna also then crop it to get rid of that extra awning that's jetting in. It's just another way of uh, cleaning up your, your uh, image. So I've got this last image of a starfish trying to throw some things in there that you would just not find on a pool, even though there are zero degree beach entry pools out there. I'm trying to, you know, uh, emphasize the fact that this looks like a real beach. Hopefully it does. So I've got this starfish. It was on a beach, but it's, wow, that's matching perfectly. Look at that. No need to adjust anything there. The sand is matching absolutely perfectly or you can put a levels adjustment, clip it to only affect the starfish and try to match the brightness of the sand that we're pasting it onto. Of course, you are messing with the starfish and just sort of blend these together. And 
And thankfully the shadow is going in the right direction. So I'll hit another hue adjustment layer on the starfish. Clipped it to only affect the starfish. Going to have this be a nice orange. And then hit control I to hide all of that. And then using a white brush, just go back in and uh, reestablish the look of that starfish. Because we kind of blew it all out in the attempt to match the starfish's sand to the sand we already had in this image. And there you have it. Beach, entry pool, dream pool. Anyway, check out all of the other photo manipulation tutorials on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.